Hello, welcome to my bench. Today, I've got a new toy. Something I picked up at the thrift store for $9.99. Uh, quite a while ago, I did a little review or play around with a VHS player in a, in a bag like this. I'll put a link to it down below. And today I was over at the, at the thrift store and I found this one. As you can see, it says, Grab Life by the Horns, Dodge. This one is a DVD player. Kind of just like the other one. It runs on 12 volts only. It does not record, but it plays DVDs, which is really cool. <clears throat> I have a feeling that the uh, that the grandchildren might like this in the back of my car. What is this? In a little bag, little holder thingy for. Oh, it's got some spongy material in it. I have no clue. I we'll have to look into that. Anyway, these things are a marvel in strap and bag engineering. <laughs> Everything that you need for it all comes down. Uh, put this back up here so we can get to it. Show you. Comes down in this little portion down here. Right now it's standing on its own little fold out thing that's strong enough to stand it up, which is kind of cool. But everything that you need for these is stored in here. And if you look at the bottom, it's got audio and video out here and um, 12 volts in. It also has AV outs to go to someplace else. And when you're using it, you zipper this up with the 12 volts coming out to a 12 volt plug, like one of these guys which I can either plug into over here or this one actually came with the 12 volt supply 4.1 amps at 12 volt switching power supply which works so you can use this thing at home <coughs> I guess you can sit it next to your real TV this baggy thingy here on the top came with a remote control See. It works. Well, we'll see if it works. I mean, it's there. And uh, warranty cards and everything. Operating and installation instructions um, for for this thing. It's from VideoTraveler.com. Neat. Does it have a date on it? Uh, let's see. Hmm. I don't see one right away. But we'll look on the unit itself. Also came with a notice. There's a misprint on page 18 of the slot in DVD player owner's manual. So it's got a DVD password is 3308 instead of whatever it says. And here's the manual. And this thing plays DVDs as digital Dolby, compact disc audio, and MP3. It says before operating this product, you are requested to read these instructions carefully. And for those watching, it's a model DVD 220S. And it's very well crinkled up here. Basically, it's just a thing. So let's see what it says on 18. 
it says preferences, NTSC and PAL, audio. Where is it? Okay, so it says here password. The factory is tentatively setting a password at 3308. If you want to change a password, select change and press enter on the remote handset. Then put old password, new password twice and press enter again. Slightly chinglish, but that doesn't. Wait a minute, 3308. What does this paper say? It says there's a mistake. The correct password is 3308. Um, okay. We're not there yet, so we'll find out. Don't even know if this thing works. So, what else is in here? Oh. Oh. Wow. It's got all the straps to hold it onto the, to the seats, which I'll show you in a minute here. It's got a nice little thingy inside and telling you how to do that. Plus all this. Evidently, this came with a Dodge. We're going to leave this out for now. Okay, let's stand her back up here. I like that little feature. That's kind of cool. And open it up. <clears throat> Got a little hook on the inside here that you can hook down here. Alright, so... There's your DVD player. Here's your monitor. It's a little, I don't know, 7 inch? A little 7 inch monitor, I think. Let's see. Quarter to corner. 7 inch. Little 7 inch color monitor, I presume. And, uh, your DVD player. Well, let's see what happens. Turn it on. Well,. The lights came on the DVD. It says eject. Okay. No. Well, maybe there's nothing in it. It does have video inputs up here, so that you can put something else into it if you want to. That's kind of cool. Uh, let's see, on the little mo TV monitor here. Oh, it has a power button. I do it. Ah! Well, ah, we've got life. Uh, the other video, I'll inset it here. So we got life, DVD video. Well, I just happened to go out and find a video to stick in here. Let's see if it works. Well, it does that part quite well. Disc loading. Play. Ah, and our federal federal law stuff up here that everybody needs to know. $250,000 fine. Uh, we won't be watching much of this. But it appears to work. Here's the remote. We'll uh, we'll just hit we'll see if the if the functions work. Skip. Aha! It skipped all that junk. This is short circuit the movie. Uh play. Play. Cool. And there's sound. I don't know if you can hear it. Let's see, volume. It goes up to sixteen. Not much volume on this. There is audio output on the side for a head headset. Well, that's nice. TriStar Pictures and PSO present Terman Foster Company production. All right, it appears to be working. Cool. All right. And it's in color. Let's see if I can get this angled here better so we can get a picture of it. And
I'm taking this with an old video camera, so <coughs> we're not expecting too much. Back off a little. Anyway, so we have video. Not bad for nine dollars for ninety-nine cents. Cool. Well, that was a nice little box and a nice little video to put up. Real short, simple. I'm going to take this and uh, hang it in the back seat of the car. And then when I got the grandkids out in the car, I can they can watch something. Huh? Let's see if I can get a better without glare. There we go. Not bad. Cool. Like I said, when you get something neat to play with for ten bucks, go for it. Well, there you go. Thanks for watching. Okay, so this isn't over. I noticed when I was when I got done doing that last little bit, I pulled out the CD and looked at it. And I don't know if we can see this or not. Let me put on my glasses. But if you look, where's it at? Right here. Can you see that? Look at those scratches. Pulling the CD out evidently scratched it. Don't want that to happen too many times. So let's find out what the heck's going on here. Uh, don't want to ruin <coughs> ruin your CDs. Let's open it up and find out. How do we open it up? It looks like five screws. See, did I say CD? I meant DVDs. I think I think I don't know there might be just a piece of dirt or something on there we'll find out uh, gotta get this stuff off of here Okay. No, not okay. Man, this stuff is aggressive, as they say in the tape industry. Um, Come on. There we go. Oh. Yeah, not much in it. I mean, well, quite a bit actually for a DVD player by today's standards. Let's look at. Let's see. Oh, October 2002, serial number 20 or 220 220 Let's take a look inside and see what all's in here. Not a whole lot. I mean, well, other than a lot of it, they could just all get onto one little board nowadays. 
Uh, yeah, it's. I don't see any bad capacitors or anything. It's got a fuse with the 12 volts in. That's nice of it. All right. Well, take this off. Because if we got a problem with scratching, it's going to be right on the head here. On the head. Ah! Jump in the wayback machine. In on the uh, DVD LED carriage. Very carefully lift these little pieces up here so that they go above the little metal clips without breaking the plastic. Oh, there's another screw. Okay. Pull that out a bit. holding you in here. A couple of hmm. Gotta be careful with these connectors because if you pull the wires out they are a pain to get back in again. Let me tell you. Been there, done that, and got plenty of t-shirts to show for it. Alright. This really wasn't supposed to be a repair video. But, okay. And ground. This thing appears to be fairly well built. It's grounded nicely. That was even glued. Okay, and probably yeah, it's got a little board over here, but we can get that out without taking that whole thing apart. Okay. Well. What holds the top on? Looks like. Oh, oh, nicely pinched in there. Um. Is that supposed to be. Yeah, I guess it is. That's supposed to be bent. I'm not a big fan of these things that suck them in like this because they're if you get one stuck in there you just got problems all right so danger invisible radiation yes 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 I know okay well maybe it's this one kind of clips in there and then the one screw sort of holds it doesn't look bent Yoink. there's a little motor that sucks it in um, Every
everything appears pretty wide on that one screw there. Wow. Those the same size? Yes. And we have her opened up. Wow, okay. Let's, uh... What is... Oh, okay, well, I think we found our problem. Come on, focus. I don't think it'll go that close. Alright, we'll try to expand this out in post, but right here, if you look real, real close, you can see little shavings of some sort of metal right there inside of this dirt <laughs> for for lack of a better term no it's dirt so we got to do not believe that that's a rubber no it's magnetic and it's metal filings really little metal filings uh, see this here this is where that sits right there and it pushes up against this on the let's see you can't see what I'm talking about okay your, your DVDs sit on top of this little motor hub here which is the part that it actually sits on and it pushes up against this little part here which forms the the bind so that it'll actually turn the CD and not wobble or anything this has a magnet in it that it is attracted to this and this whole piece It just rides on this little little bump right there. Well, it goes into this little hole. But it's the fact that it's pushing up against itself. Well, that's okay except for, if you look, boink, that's a magnet. And that magnet is covered with some sort of iron filings yeah here look at this I got a uh, neodymium magnet here and when I bring it close I don't know if you can see that or not gotta hold on tight but look at that. Look at it move. So we'll just use this magnet to get all the junk off this other magnet. I don't. Little metal. Shavings. Wow. And among those metal shavings are little pieces of metal. Well, let's see if I can actually wipe that off. And this, it really, this little part in the middle here doesn't really have any... It just connects to that top up there. It's not what pushes, it's not what forms the friction to get the DVD to turn, that's out here. So what all these little metal shavings are, 
I don't know. Or maybe. I don't know. Maybe that's something that's actually in there. Um. Alright, that was nice. Where did that go? That was my magnet. Maybe there's supposed to be a little metal cap on top of there, but... Not to my knowledge. All little metal shavings are gone now. I guess we'll have to find out if it still works. First of all, i got to find my little... little magnet that just shot... <laughs> into here somewhere. Okay, I don't see it. <laughs> That's a pretty good sized magnet to be losing. And I didn't see it go, so all I did was hear it go squack when it hit the hit the metal in here. Okay, this here is silly. Where are you? This is like when you drop something on the floor and it goes just far enough underneath everything that you can't find it. Didn't make it out here, did it? No. Hmm. I'll be back. Okay, I found it. <laughs> it was stuck over here on the side, right up here. Whatever. Alright, but we got this all nice and clean now. Well, no we don't. There's still a piece on there. It'll be interesting to see if this actually still works. Well, I kind of hope so. supposed to should be something up there but sure don't know what oh well let's find out put her back together wires go under there and under there these things just sort of slide in here so they don't move. That's everything is keyed, so it's not like it's going anywhere. Alright. Put that back down there. This, these little wires. Stuck in this little slot over here on the side. Oh, I did that well. Okay. So they kind of 
run under everything, get out of the way, and then this piece, it gets Just pull forward, it all locks right in. Okay. And this screw holds a whole mess on, but this goes through two plates that also have that one back there in the back, so that's that's correct. Make sure there's nothing in the way here. It does not appear to be. And carefully slide that back on there. Get the wires out the way. Zero room. With those wires where they're supposed to be, it's kind of touchy. There we go. Put this guy back on. Make sure he's seated well. And this guy here. Alright. That's back in. That's back in. Take this big screw, which went right here for the ground on the front. All right. So, let's see if it still works. How can I do this easily? Let's see. Hang on a second, I'll be back. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm sorry about the thing here, but to show you, uh, I just hooked it up to my TV above the bench. This is <laughs> this is Fred, the programming monkey. Okay. Um, I'm going to take my CD or DVD and stick it back in and see what happens. Well, it went in. It says it's loading. And it says disk loading up there. And... Aha! We have it. We've got our... We've got our video. And it's working. Very nice and clear, too. Well, oh, it's a more modern or less than 2002 television, that's for sure. Uh, okay, so it's all coming up. Groovy. Well, there was just a pile of, uh, evidently a pile of metal shavings in there that weren't really necessary. Let's see. It says malfunction. <laughs> it's, no, okay. Um, there we go. It works. Son of a gun. Where's pause? There it is. All right, so we've got it, got it working. Uh, let's see if it eats any more scratches. There were a couple on here, but no, it came out this way this time, which means the scratch would have been here. And if we look, other than the, that's not a straight scratch. That's reflection there. Hey, no, no, no straight scratches across it where it came out. <clears throat> Not like that other 
actual virtual gouge. Let's see if you can see it. Right. Uh, yeah, see them right there? Oh, right there. That's what those metal shavings were doing. So, it works. Okay, well, it didn't intend for this to be a repair video, but what the heck. Hey, thanks for watching, and um, give it a thumbs up if you like it, and subscribe, and make comments. And that's what we're here for.